just like to thank everybody for uh, coming tonight. I really do appreciate it. I want to talk, obviously, tonight we're going to talk about maximizing your railroad retirement annuity. Um, so let's just, let's just jump right into it. And uh, first, a little legal stuff, right? Uh, purpose of this is for education, general information, no tax advice, no investment advice, no cooking advice, none of, no advice. So uh, if you get, have any ideas, please consult a, you know, a financial planner, an accountant, legal counsel minister, a rabbi, a priest, whoever you need to counsel, talk to. All right. But uh, there's your disclaimer. All right. So everybody can read that. All right. So I like to start off. I mean, the way I look at a lot of things, I, I approach things as uh, good news and bad news, a lot of issues. So when I think of bad news, right, things that come up that are bad news, you know, <laughs> who's in control, that type of thing. So let's just talk about the retirement bad news that comes that comes up, all right? So these are numbers that I got from uh, the Economic Policy Institute, Institute from 2017, right? So these were actually kind of staggering, some of these numbers. $5,000 is the median retirement savings for Americans, all right? That's, that's a scary number to start with. Uh, the other was about, 80% people are really, you know, they're agitated that they're not going to have enough money for retirement. So, and you can see why when you look at the first number, right? It's, uh, you know, $5,000 $5, is, uh, it's not really going to do it for retirement. And then you look at Social Security. Um, Board of Trustees just reported to Congress. I'm not sure if anybody's seen it. Is that in 2035, they're basically insolvent. So. Um, that means they've got to do one of three things or a combination of three things is raise the payroll taxes, uh, increase the retirement age, or reduce the benefits. So um, that's, you know, so that's kind of bad news. That's, that's not good. So I can understand why there's a sense of agitation. You can really see, I mean, when you have median retirement savings of $5,000, you can see how important Social Security is to people's retirement plans, right? It's, it's very, very important to, uh, to say the least. I mean, uh, so uh, Social Security is not going to go away. Uh, that I'm very confident of, but something is going to change the Social Security system in 2035, uh, and that's TBD. Uh, we just don't know yet exactly what it's going to be, but it's, it's coming. So that's the bad news. And, you know, thankfully, we have good news, right? Good news is that you guys, for the most part, that uh, on here are all railroaders, right? And you contribute into the railroad retirement system, right? Railroad retirement board. So, this is one of the examples that um, uh, that uh, the railroad retirement board puts out when you crunch some of the numbers. So, if you're a retired railroader who's you know 60 years of age and over th uh, uh, and with 30 years of credible railroad service you're looking at over $2 million in railroad benefits. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. I, I always say that that's kind of the golden ticket for uh, railroad retirement to say the least, right? If you've done 60 and 30. And then the uh, Railroad Retirement Board, they also report to Congress, okay? And they're very solvent. They, well, they're very, they're well above uh, average for, uh, Solvency, let's say. So their nearest number is 2075 is when they, they feel they have some, uh, some risk there at 2075. So uh, we'll put that in the good spot right now. And I actually read the report on that they uh, did to Congress and uh, it was pretty interesting. They did some modeling on the solvency of the program and they did, uh, th uh, they ran three models and the first two models were very excellent. And they did one model that showed some risk, but in that model that, uh, that had the risk, uh, it basically was, well, if the, retire if the railroad employment force was cut in half, it would have a severe impact on uh, the railroad retirement system. Well, you know, that's basic economics, right? I mean, you have, X number of uh, ret railroad retirees and only half of them are now paying into the system. Uh, yeah, you're going to have some solvency issues. Um, so that that was uh, 
so that was that was an interesting report. So that you know, from a railroad retirement uh, retiree expect uh, perspective, it's it's a very very solvent program just, uh, to say the least. So let me just introduce myself. My name is John McNamara. I'm a railroad retirement specialist. I run Highball Advisors. Uh, it's a solo. Uh, RIA, Registered Investment Advisor. I'm in South Carolina is uh, where I'm located. I have uh, clients throughout the country. Uh, I work virtually. Uh, you probably see from the back picture, you know, I work out of my house here and, uh, you know, through the power of the internet, it's 2019, I'm able to connect with people across the country. And then a little fun facts about me. I love Hoosiers, as we all know. Clemson football starts tomorrow, Georgia Tech, eight o'clock. So this is a good uh, precursor to the football game, a railroad retirement webinar on a Wednesday night. Uh, we have the Giants, big Giant fan from way back. He's a season ticket holder. I grew up in New Jersey. I've been down in Greenville, South Carolina here. This is where I'm located for about eight years. And I grew up uh, on the, uh, actually on the Gladstone branch of the Lackawanna Railroad, and uh, which eventually became uh, Erie Lackawanna, then New Jersey Transit, and I think Conrail took the freight but I'm sure some of you guys already know that. So here's the agenda that I want to talk to you guys about tonight. Um, kind of the big picture, what you kind of should know about railroad retirement benefits, just give you a working knowledge, hopefully, give you some facts about it. Um, then start talking about, you know, when you should take railroad retirement, when some good times, some of the implications of taking railroad retirement at, at different times. And then we'll talk about uh, some strategies to, uh, uh, maximize your railroad retirement benefits. We'll look at some of those numbers. Uh, we'll do that. Uh, we'll do a, a, a Q and A afterwards. We'll take some questions uh, in the allotted time. And then what I didn't put down in here is at the end, I'll just do a uh, you know a shameless plug or something, a little commercial, a couple couple minutes if you guys can stick around for that. I appreciate it. Uh, so before we get started, uh, why don't we just do a quick little poll? I put this up here and um, take a look at and it's just, just kind of get a flavor for the audience that we have tonight like what when you think about railroad retirement or retiring from railroad what, have you thought about it at all um, about when you would like to retire uh, from the railroad so we'll just give that we'll just give that a second for you guys to uh... oh okay it's Wow, it's neck and neck between early and full retirement. Okay, all right, good, good. All right, well, thank you for that. Yeah, it's it's really, it's, uh, oh, there's early with the last minute. <laughs> I think early uh, beat uh, full retirement at the, uh, at the wire. So, uh, okay, so that's great. So um, uh, half of you are, basically half of you are thinking early, the other half are uh, full retirement age, and uh, nobody's really thinking about 70. And maybe that's more indicative of, of the industry, the, um, how hard of an industry it is. So anyway, let's get started. Here's the, um, so, oh, let me just click here. Thank you. So little history, little thumbnail sketch of the railroad retirement benefits, kind of the history of where it was. So started in the Great Depression era, right? 34, 35, 37, the Railroad Retirement Acts. Obviously, you can imagine back then how you know tough and dangerous it was to work on the railroad. So you would be retired from the railroad and you basically would have nothing. And uh, uh, FDR at the time and, and the, uh, obviously the Congress, they passed the Railroad Retirement Acts and that started the, uh, uh, the pension program by the by the government. And, you know, even back then, when you look at Social Security and even the Railroad Retirement Acts, uh, when they did it, uh, you know, the median age was 60. And you can only imagine what how tough it was for a railroad to even to make it to 60, 61. So even though these programs were put in, I, I'm sure I doubt that too many of them were really accessed uh, to the extent that they are today. Uh, you know, people can look for, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40 years of retirement in some, in some certain, certain cases. Then we move over to Ike, right? I like Ike, 51. They came in with the spousal annuities, right? That's a great idea. 74, Ford administration, uh, two tier. So we, we'll talk about that later, the tier one and tier two. That's the uniqueness of the railroad retirement system, right? It's the two tiers. Uh, then in the 80s, uh, 81, uh, big changes came in. And if you look at the time of 81 when this came in, 
you had a lot of consolidation uh, going on pre-81 in the railroads um, uh, into almost, it, that was this, really the start of the consolidation from the 70s all the way into the 80s. And then you also had a major, um, uh, well, I guess it would be a recession or borderline depression, you know, you had runaway inflation, stagnation, all that stuff. It, it, it wasn't a good time uh, in the late 70s and late 80s. So the railroad retirement system actually was, um, was running out of money. Uh, so they uh, set the payroll taxes for the tier one and tier two. And they also allowed um, for the uh, railroad retirement to borrow from the U.S. Treasury uh, to help uh, shore up the uh, railroad uh, retirement pensions. So that, that was a big deal. Uh, obviously, the, tre the Treasury hasn't had to do that now. Uh, it's, it's much more stable. Then we have in 2001, which is another great reform. There's W. Smiley. Uh, was another great reform. The 1630, right? I talked earlier about the golden ticket of the 1630. So that came into play. So 1630, right? Full retirement age if you, is uh, instead of for somebody born after 1967, which or uh, after 1960 is 67 years old, uh, full retirement age, if you have 30 years of experience in the railroad is 60. So that's, that's a great benefit. And then they lowered the basic service requirement. So pre night, then they kind of went retro. So pre 1995, you had to do 10 years of credible railroad service to vest to, in order to get the railroad retirement benefits. And now post 1995, you have to do five years of uh, credible railroad service or 60 months actually. Uh, it's a technical term, but, and then they also did finally that the acronym down there, NNRIT, is the National Railroad Investment Trust. So what they did is they took the payroll, the tier two payroll taxes and gave it to the National Railroad Investment Trust, uh, which is overseen by the uh, Railroad Retirement Board. And what they do is it's made up of three uh, people from the railroad, three people from management and one uh, uh, innocent bystander, so to speak, uh, and they invest that money. So uh, Social Security, right, and, and, and your Tier 1, they invest in U.S. Treasuries. But with Tier 2, they said, uh, and this is just great, is they said, we have to grow this money. So they'll invest in a diversified portfolio of investments like, uh, you know, stocks, uh, domestic, international, large cap, small cap, fixed income, international income, commodities, uh, real estate hedge fund. So they do everything and they've grown the money and they've done a great job on that. So that's a little uh, cocktail conversation there for you. Okay. So how is the railroad retirement annuity uh, funded? Right. So two tiers, right. And I, I always think of tier one is equal to social security, you know, walks like a duck, talks like a duck, you know, basically it's a duck, it's social security. So that's a payroll tax paid by you and the railroad or you and the employer, 6.2%. Okay, and that would be a number that uh, you that we're going to be watching out here over the years if they move the Social Security because these numbers match Social Security. So if they have to change Social Security, we got to watch out that for that because they might have to move the payroll tax and they might move the retirement ages too, right? I talked about that. Um, so and we already know the railroad retirement's well funded. So it'd be it would be interesting to see if they decouple from Social Security. But that's for that's for another topic. Uh, and then on the tier one, you keep paying the payroll tax until you are up to 100 uh, over 132,900 um, dollars for the year. And that number moves basically moves up every year based on wage inflation, CPI, a couple other inflation numbers. And you always have the Medicare tax at 1.45. Uh, that you and the employer pay, and there's no limit on that. And then on tier two, which I consider a pension income, is also funded by your payroll tax. Uh, that's 4.9%, and the railroad kicks in 13.1%, with a maximum uh, of this year's 98,700. And that, like I said, also moves on inflation. Uh, just a little interesting, at one time, uh, the tier two, uh, the railroad tax was like zero, and the railroad was like 20. Uh, so I think the railroad said, ah, we don't want to do this. So <laughs> they came down on their number and you guys came up. Uh, so uh, supposedly that's the highest they can go with. Uh, so uh, hopefully we don't see that ever go up above 4.9%. But, uh, you know, they've done a good job, like I say, managing the money. So that's, that's how the uh, retirement is funded. So how is it calculated now? 
right? Uh, so you'll need to memorize these formulas. Please, please write them down. There'll be a test. No, I'm only kidding. There won't be a test. I don't know how these, I don't know, like, especially the tier one monthly benefit, how they came up with those numbers, but they did. But what the interesting thing here is that the takeaway I get from it, when you look at tier one and tier two social security, is that top 35 index earning years, right? So they're taking your top 35 earning years up to 60, right? And that's how they're figuring out your uh, tier one benefit, right? So take that and then let's go over to the right side of the screen and look at the tier two monthly benefit, right? So it's average monthly compensation, years of service, but look at the bottom there. The 60 months of your highest earnings. So the tier two is being calculated, right? your average monthly compensation number is off your five highest years. That is a tremendous benefit uh, versus your 35 years on your, tier, on your tier one, right? If you can take your top five highest, that's great. Um, that's, a, that's great. And then obviously, as you keep doing your years of service, that's another great variable uh, coming in. Uh, a little fun, <laughs> a little, I was at a railroad uh, retirement board meeting in Chicago. And I asked the guy, how'd you get to 0 0.007? Nobody could answer. So I, I, I don't know. I think they just back into these numbers sometimes. But that's how they came up to that. But th like I said, the interesting thing there is that five years uh, on the average monthly compensation. So, you know, just like a little top of your, um, you know, a little strategy on top of your head right there is, hey, you know, have five great years. And if you, if you can work into yourselves into a part-time role for the last couple of years, uh, you're still getting the years, you're still getting that uh, years of service uh, variable in there. How great is that, right? Because you're counting five years back before. But anyway, uh, that's just something. So that's how your railroad retirement annuity is, is uh, calculated. All right. So um, I took this from the railroad retirement board. I just thought this was interesting on the way people, uh, the way the railroad retirement annuity estimates. So I highlighted future benefits. And so I, you know, you know, I do, well, you know, financial, not only I, but, you know, people do financial planning. So we got to look at what's going to happen in the future. And the railroad retirement really doesn't do that. They kind of, they'll tell you what you can get paid out in the annuity, but they're going to take what your current situation is, right? So they don't know where you're going to be. So if you're 45 or 50, you know, that's going to look a lot different on the pay scale, perhaps, than uh, when you're, uh, you know, 58, 60 or whatever it is. So that's one of the things that I like to do that I kind of built myself a kind of proprietary model that I'm able to calculate future benefits. I just thought that was kind of interesting. And I don't, I don't blame the railroad retirement board for not giving you future benefits. That's not their business, right? They're not there to make estimates for you guys or, uh, I mean, predict the future, you know, you're just the facts, ma'am, just the facts, right? That's, that's their job. So um, I thought that was interesting. So, uh, these were the questions that I thought were big, right? When you, uh, when you want to talk about railroad retirement, right? So the first one is really important. And I, I don't think, well, I, I don't like to do broad brushes, but I think a lot of people don't think about how much income they really need in retirement. And so, okay, well, I'm about to retire. Well, that doesn't really work. So you have to think about how much income you're going to need in retirement. Right? So, you know, some uh, some ways you can look at it and say, well, let me figure out what I spend now. And then you can say, I'll be a factor of that. And, you know, one number might be 75% of that, of, right? Because you don't have the same expenses um, uh, when you're not working, right? You're not commuting, you're not, you know, you're not, whatever it is, you know, some of the things that required for you to go to work, you just have a different lifestyle. Uh, you know, you might be able to, take away a car or something like that. And then the other thing that uh, you look at is like how long you li will live. Well, nobody knows that, but you know, that's a factor. So it's kind of interesting. Um, I don't know if anybody saw one of my last, was it a video or a blog piece? I, I forget. I mean, I'm producing a lot of content. I sometimes get messed up. I think it was a video, but you know, uh, the railroad retirement board did a longevity study and uh, yeah, it was a video. And uh, basically, uh, railroaders are living just as long as the general population. So, um, uh, so you have to plan. And what I look, it's very, uh, there was an interesting study also on, um, well, where did I say, uh, uh, it was a stat where if a couple, this was, this is a good stat. If a couple 
is 65 years old, let's say a couple makes it 65 years old. Well, there's a 50% chance that one of them is going to make it to 90 and a 17% chance that one of them is going to make it to 95. So, well, gee whiz, I got a plan for that because 50%, that's, that's, a, that's a big possibility, right? Even if the number is 5 or 10%, well, you got a plan for that, right? I mean, there's certain things you want to do in life if you knew there was a 5% chance of that happening, right? You know, getting on an airplane or whatever. I mean, what's the chances of, uh, you know, your house burning down? Well, it's probably less than one, but, you know, you still got to plan for it by buying uh, fire insurance. But anyway, uh, so how long you'll live? You got to think about that when you're thinking about uh, retirement. Um, so, um, so when you th also think about it, um, obviously, you know, uh, for some people in the railroads, you know, it's a hard life. And then also people, uh, some people aren't in the best of health. So you can start thinking about, well, I could take a smaller benefit sooner versus a bigger benefit later because of my health conditions. So uh, you have to think about that also. But needless to say, um, right, I mean, healthcare. I, I don't even know what healthcare is going to look like in 10, 20, 30 years, right? It could be significantly different. I, I think they actually said the largest growing population uh, percentage wise is like a hundred year olds. I think what they call centarians or something like that. But uh, so, you know, you have to plan for it. That's all I can say. I, you know, I understand everybody's situation is different, but uh, the watchword there is to plan for that. So that is, those are the questions that when you're thinking about when to retire from the railroad, those are the big ones, right? How much money do I need? How long do I plan, you know, to have this money last all the, all those, you know, what do I want to do in retirement? So I like to teach by example. I find that kind of works the best, at least for me. I'm, I mean, that's why my brain's trained. I don't know. So I made up this fictitious couple, right? So, uh, Jim and Jane Eager, right? That's kind of cute. Uh, both 49 years old. Jim's working in the railroad, making 120,000. Jane works part time, earns 30, right? Their, their budget, right? They do a budget and they spend them about $7,500 per month. But, the, you know, this is their retirement. So, they both want to retire early at 62. But, Jim, when Jim's at 62, he'll have 20 years of railroad service. All right, and uh, um, so they said, well, in retirement, we're gonna spend 52.50 per month, right? So they cut down, right? They're not working, so they're gonna cut down a little bit in retirement. And then I just threw in this here, what kind of, what type of investors are they, right? Well, you know, because, you know, they probably have a 401k, uh, just conservative growth, right? A mixture of, you know, maybe 60% 60, 60 stocks, 40% bonds, conservative growth. Um, and that number there, that 60, that's just uh, kind of a fun number that we, I use at my, um, in my practice from a, a company called Riskalyze. And that's basically, um, it's, it's supposed to be like a speed limit. So what speed are they comfortable driving their retirement portfolio at and still reach their goals, right? So they're comfortable with about, uh, you know, 60 on this uh, miles per hour uh, speed limit uh, driving at to get it. So imagine, I'll give you an example, right? So cash would be one <laughs> on the speed limit, right? All my money's in cash and all my money's in um, Facebook, let's say. I just own Facebook. That would be driving like at 95 or something, right? Because you just have one stock and the stock's going up and down all the time. So just to give you an example on where they are on the risk scale. So here they are, all right? So, I put their information into my uh, financial planning software and I did a comparison, a side by side, right? So we have the full retirement age versus the current strategy. And what I did here in this uh, um, analysis is I stripped away their 401ks, their pensions, any other taxable accounts, you know, maybe they have some maybe rental income, any other assets, I'm just looking at the railroad retirement pensions that they would be receiving from the uh, railroad retirement boards, right? Nothing else, just, lo just looking at that, okay? And the object of this exercise here is to figure out what type of floor or base that they can have um, by just using the railroad retirement annuity. So let's look down in the gray section here. Uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse, maybe you can't, where it says current. So, right, I put Jim's planning horizon 
out to 90 years old. He wants to retire at 62. Jane the same. Just made very, very simple. And, you know, obviously I can adjust it. Everybody's different, right? So Jane, same, 90, 62, right? Expe month, uh, retirement monthly expenses, 52.50, right? Then I'm able to calculate um, their tier two income for the year. So Jim's for the year's, you know, 23, over 23,000, closer to 24. Jane's is 10. And they're pre this based off their pre uh, retirement living expense, 7,500. And then uh, where I have strategies, it says Social Security. So just give you a heads up all financial planning software, nobody does railroad retirement in their financial planning software, but that's okay. I mean, I do it. As you can see, I calculated the tier two, I can do it uh, manually myself. But, uh, and Social Security, right, is tier one. So, uh, even though it says Social Security, it's really tier one. So the current strategy, right? The current strategy is, uh, is to retire at 62. So when we look at the numbers up top there, well, what, what percent probability of success do they have to reach the retirement goals just living off of railroad retirement? It's zero, it's not gonna happen. They just, at 62, they can't get enough money to live off railroad retirement. Fine, that's all right. Then, you know, nothing wrong with that. We just ran the numbers. Now, if they went to full retirement age at 67, all right, they would then have a base, right, and a 55% chance of reaching uh, their retirement goals. So that's what they've built there is a foundation or a floor from which then to layer on your 401ks, your pensions, your taxable accounts, whatever else you have, rental income, whatever uh, other property. So uh, by stretching it out to 67, you can see, look, just look on the tier two income alone, uh, you know, 23,000 to 27,000 and from 10,000 to 12,000. So that's a uh, good amount of money just on the tier two alone. And then obviously the tier one's a lot, a lot bigger. And I, I demonstrated here, um, as I run it out to 90, uh, the plan, the full retirement plan would garner them $113,165 more than their uh, current uh, 62 plan. All right, so that's just one look uh, that I did at. Now, I also ran the, um, uh, the scenario for the maximum, okay? Now, listen, this is important, and especially even when I did the poll, okay? Nobody chose 70 in the poll. And, okay, I just wanted to put it out there, what the maximum would be, all right? And I understand the industry. It's a very hard, it's a very hard life. It takes a toll on a lot of people in the industry, on the body. So there's no judgment or anything when I tell you these numbers. I just wanted to give it from an education point of view, all right? So just take it with a grain of salt. But I, I wanted to show you what it would look like uh, from a maximum point of view. So they would be able to retire uh, with on the railroad retirement annuity. They'd be able to reach their goals just on the uh, uh, annuity alone, right? So you look at their tier two income, it's a huge jump from 23,000 to 30,000. And Jane's on the spouse annuity from 10 to uh, 13.5. All right, then you also have to look at um, on the tier one, you're now getting, um, you're getting delayed retirement credits from your full retirement age, that's 8% a year. So from 67 to 68 is 8%, then 8% from 68 to 69 and so on up to 70. That is tremendous uh, compounding. Uh, I don't know where you can get basically a guaranteed 8% anywhere with no risk. That's just fantastic. Um, I mean, I, I feel for a lot of retired people now and seniors. I mean, you're looking at uh, these interest rates that are just ridiculously low and they're just punishing uh, retirees on, on interest. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know if anybody follows the market. I mean, the 10 year, uh, Treasury is below one and a half percent. Can you imagine that? Giving uh, somebody your money for ten years and getting one and a half percent a year. Oh my God! And, it, and if we're if this was a European seminar, it'd be a negative interest rate. So I don't like I don't like where interest rates are going for uh, retirees. Uh, so if you if you can get to the delayed retirement credits, that eight percent is fantastic. So I just throw that out there on uh, the possibilities. And actually, as you can see, it's a huge payout. Um, 
on the uh, uh, extra uh, income that would be, uh, the, or assets that you would have at the, at the end of your plan versus the current strategy of 62. So that's the uh, maximum versus the current. And once again, I'm just throwing it out there uh, to get you thinking about uh, some, some ideas. And, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to do what's right for you, what's right for your family, what's right for your body <laughs> for some people. Um, right? I mean, no use. Oh, yeah, well, I killed myself to 70. Now I'm not enjoying my retirement because, you know, I can't, I have no knees and I've got no hip left, right? So things like that, you, you got to factor in. All right. Uh, so here's some, here's some of the steps. We'll continue to move on here. Wait, hold on a second. Let me just grab a quick drink of water here. Hopefully I'm not talking too fast for you. Sometimes my New Jersey comes out. Uh, I haven't moved. I haven't moved to my uh, southern uh, pace yet. So here's my uh, here's some steps that I use uh, when we talk about maximization. Right, take advantage of the tier two years of service. I think is important. Right, um, uh, to me that's the great variable that kicks up your uh, tier two is uh, banging out those years. I think that's great. And even that strategy I talked about because you're only taking the five highest years, if you can even take some uh, lesser work in the railroad, maybe even on a part-time basis doing something where you can just keep accumulating those monthly credits to keep uh, building up your tier two, I think that's, that's one way to do it, right? Think about that somehow. Uh, I discussed uh, in the last slide the delayed retirement credits, uh, that 8% a year, that's another great way to maximize. Uh, just remember, I you know I just did that video on the um, on the penalization of the um, on the tier one, right? So you're getting uh, what was it a uh, thirty? Jeez, uh, what was the top of my head? It was thirty percent discount if you're taking uh, early retirement from what you would be getting at full retirement age. So that's that's a significant amount significant amount of money. Um, there. So even if you can just stretch, say, hey, in, instead of 62, I might go to 63 or 64, right? You keep, you're starting to pick up, you're picking up some money there versus your original 62. So every month, it's based off every month, you're picking up uh, additional uh, monthly benefits on your tier one. So that's, that's something to think about. And then obviously at full retirement age, you go 8% a year, which is great. Uh, and then finally, what I did here, this last one, and uh, nobody really talks about this because at the end of the day, um, I'm sure you guys, uh, especially those working with advisors and planners, there's not too many people who understand railroad retirement, but there's also some intricacies that afford you guys, the railroaders, unique opportunities. And I'd like to just uh, demonstrate these to you. Um, once again, I'm not making any recommendations or anything, but I just find it very interesting and neat. So you've all been. Right, I'm sure you've all uh, listened to on the phone or on the radio or have gotten in your mailbox, you know, come to the uh, to retirement income annuity seminar, free dinner, Ruth Chris, the steak, all that, right? So, you know, these people are trying to uh, sell you an annuity so you have some, uh, you know, retirement income. And, you know, rightly or wrongly, you know, people go back back and forth on annuities and, you know, I have my own views and, you know, we can have a pint sometime and I can discuss that on you. But nevertheless, it's, you know, it's there to uh, generate income in retirement. That's, you know, the high level uh, explanation of an annuities, right? But the interesting part about railroaders is that you guys have an annuity already. You've been funding it. Your railroad's been funding it. That's called tier two. It's, it's better than any it's better than any annuity out there in the marketplace. You have your retirement income annuity already. You don't, so in my view, like I said, this is my view, you don't need another annuity from somebody because you've, you've already been funding one for all these years through tier two. So what I like to do is I look at, and if, if you remember my previous slide from uh, uh, when I said the Eagers had, were a 60 on the risk profile, Right, so I just said, okay, they're in a 401k, right? And I'm sure some of you have these target date 401ks, right? So let's just, I use this example. Let's say if they had a target date uh, 401k and it was uh, valued at, uh, you know, $500,000 and uh, 
you know, uh, and they're invested at 60 and they figure, okay, yeah, I'm invested right where I want. And because that's where, when I, when I ran the risk of lies on the target date, it came out to around 60. So yeah, they're invested perfectly, right? Well, the interesting thing is they're really not technically because they own this tier two railroad retirement annuity. And if you look back, remember they were drawing, you know, 25,000, $27,000 or in their tier two. Okay. So Imagine, right, uh, let me put it this way. Imagine if you worked for a non-railroad company, right? And let's say you worked for uh, Exxon, right? You work for Exxon, you retire, and you have a million-dollar 401k, and you say, uh, okay, I, I want some railroad retirement income, right? And, uh, I mean, I want some retirement income uh, to help, help me to make sure I have income besides Social Security for the rest of my uh, for the rest of my life and say, okay, I'll go buy an annuity. Well, your rare retirement annuity to, to equal the amount of income for the eagers in this example, right? To equal that same amount, if I went out, if they retired at 62 and said, I wanna replicate that amount of income, they would need roughly $500,000 to replicate that by buying an immediate annuity, right? That pays out an immediate annuity. You give them the $500,000 and they start paying you uh, every every uh, month, you know, until you die, that would be a five hundred thousand dollar investment. So now, now that says to me, well, I've already checked that box on retirement income through my tier two. That now gives me a uh, my portfolio risk is actually a thirty one. It's not the amount of risk that I want to take because I'm more comfortable taking a little bit more risk, right? So let's go to the right side of the screen. I can take a little more risk on my portfolio, which is an 80-20, which basically means 80% stocks, 20% fixed income. I'll still have my railroad retirement annuity, but my now my risk adjustment is 50. And the reason I would say, um, uh, and this, this is different for everybody. Everybody has different strategies, right? But the point is, over time, we know, right? Statistically, we know that equities outperform right? Fixed income, right? That's why, that's why the Railroad Retirement Board started the, uh, the National Railroad Investment Trust is because we need to invest in equities to grow the money, right? So this gives you an opportunity just to go out, you know, go out a little bit further out on the risk spectrum to say, hey, you know what, maybe I could take a little more, uh, a little more equity in my portfolio, uh, you know, small stocks, large caps, wh whatever it is. But I just want to trigger that in your head to think about it, about some of the uh, advantages of the uh, tier two uh, railroad retirement annuity, right? So nobody's, nobody's really going to talk to you about that railroad retirement board's not going to go, you know, you should be invested in more equities. No, they, you know, they're just going to tell you what you're, you know, you will get this much on this date. That's what they do, and they do they do a good job at it, right? I mean, they're sending you the check, so they must be doing a good job. Um, so anyway, that's that's I, what I wanted to just uh, talk to you guys about on that. Um, all right, so let's open it up uh, to uh, questions. Um, does anybody have any questions? Feel free to send me questions, and we'll answer them, and then. Uh, after that, we'll, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, I assume you can just type them in. So for all you who don't know, this is my first webinar. So hopefully it's, everything's working out all right here. Um, okay, I got one question in here. Uh, can my spouse collect railroad retirement while I'm working? Uh, for the, I assume for the railroad. No. She can't, you can't collect uh, railroad retirement until uh, the employee has retired. Um, uh, because you think about it, right? Your railroad retirement annuity is actually still being uh, calculated. So um, uh, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not set yet. So you wanna know what, what it would be. Uh, let's see, uh, another question here came in. Can my wife get Social Security when she retires and my tier two six years after when I retire? Okay, yes. So I'm gonna do another webinar. I'm gonna to try to do quarterly webinars. Um, I think this is a good way to communicate. And I'm gonna do one just on 
because there's a lot of people that did some time in social security and in rare retirement and there's a lot of different strategies there so yes she can she can take social security right and then uh switch over later when you go on to rare retirement in which case she would then get the tier one and tier two benefits and there's other um and depending, I don't know if she, how much her social security is, we can discuss that if you wanna reach out to me because there's other strategies. If she's a high income earner like you, there's uh, other strategies, uh, you know, depending upon what the spousal benefit is, right? Is she above or below the spousal benefit? So uh, uh, let's see. So next question is, when does uh, delayed retirement start to grow 8% per year after full retirement age? See, that, at age 60, right? After full retirement. Yeah. Monica, that's a good question. And that's, that's one of those little downsides of, uh, and, I, and I don't want to say downside, but of the 60 and 30, right? So they go 60 and 30, full retirement age. Well, yes and no. It is full retirement age. You're getting full retirement benefits, but the delayed retirement credits won't kick in until 67. So life would be great if I could go from 60 to 70 and get 8% every year, but unfortunately you can't do that. Um, so you would be on full retirement uh, from 60 to 67 and then delayed retirement credits would kick in 67, 68, 69, 70. So um, uh, I hope that uh, answers your question on that. Uh, you, you can't get that. Uh, let's see. Uh, do I need a current collection connection to collect rare retirement? Uh, no, you don't, right? So that's a little misnomer. I've seen that some people mention that sometimes. Oh, you know, I'm not going to get my rare retirement because I don't work for the railroad anymore. Well, no. So current connections only relate to uh, disability and survivor annuities. It has nothing to do uh, with your uh, railroad retirement annuity. So that's not a factor. I mean, imagine, just think about that. I always kind of tell people, take a step back from that and just, you know, high level, think about that. Say, wait a second, I'm giving you 5% of my paycheck every month and now you're going to tell me I don't get it? I mean, that's like, that would be like robbery. <laughs> so, no, there, uh, there isn't. Uh, next question, is there a lump sum option to get the total value of railroad retirement at full age, at full retirement age? No, there's no uh, lump sum option, all right? Uh, that would be, you know, private pensions have lump sum options, but uh, the railroad retirement uh, annuities, they don't, they don't have, uh, uh, they don't have any uh, uh, lump sum options there. So uh, uh, that would be great. I mean, if you could take a lump sum, but then, you know, you think about, you know, once again, take a step back, say, well, you know, you could give somebody the money and they might blow through it. You know, I like the Giants minus three. Next thing you know, you have no money for retirement. So, uh, no, they can't, they, they can't do that. Um, let's see, what else we have here? Can I get, um, let's see here, let's scroll down. If I take my company pension at 55 after 34 years of service and delay rare retirement benefits until 60, are there any reduction of benefits? No, there is no reduction of benefits because you would be, uh, you've done your, th you've, you've met the 60 and 30, right? You're not taking retirement till 60, railroad retirement benefits till 60, and you've had your 34 years of service. So you're, you're good, you're good to go on that. You would be getting, uh, yeah, you wouldn't be getting any reduction of your railroad retirement benefits at that age. Um, do I have to work a full year after reaching full retirement age to get the 8% increase or is it prorated? It's prorated per month. Um, so whatever 8% divided by 12 is, is how uh, a fraction of it. So uh, uh, it's, it is, it is prorated uh, on that. Uh, let's see here. Time for a couple more and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap up. Uh, let's see here. And thank you for the questions, great questions. I hope everybody's. Do you re recommend a financial advisor that's connected to the railroad, uh, no charge, or is a third party that we have to pay a better choice? Okay. Well, um, <laughs> I don't. I you know I'm a I'm a planner slash advisor, so I guess I'm I, I'm not the most neutral person, right? So if you do if you do work with a planner advisor, you know obviously I do recommend that. And especially uh, make sure you do work with one 
uh, that understands railroad retirement. I think that's very important um, because there's a lot of there's a lot of strategies in play there, and and, uh, um, and that's the you know the purpose of this webinar is maximization. Don't leave the money on the table. You've worked too hard. Uh, you know, I, I, it's funny. I was just on a uh, on a, a Facebook group today, and a fellow said who was retired, he goes, oh, I just found out that my, uh, my wife, who's on uh, railroad retirement, uh, she can also get Social Security. So they're getting an extra $600 a month. I'm like, how did you not know that? You've been all these years without this success. She was making a lot of money in Social Security. So even though she was getting the spousal benefit, she still had the right to claim Social Security. So um, that's why I get nervous about you know, you got to make sure that you're getting all the benefits that you did. I mean, you guys are working hard in the railroad. I mean, you deserve every dime you get. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, can I get both rare? Uh, one more question here. Can I get both railroad retirement and Social Security at the same time? Uh, no, uh, you can't. Uh, so you, there's that. That was used to be called double dipping, right? There's no double dipping, right? So. Uh, there's an interchange of information or a, a free flow of information going back and forth between the Social Security Board and Railroad Retirement Board. They're always watching you. So <laughs> they, know, they know how much you should get, right? Your tier, tier one should equal your Social Security and neither one should be more or less, right? So um, they will, um, if, if somehow one gets if Social Security gets paid to you in the railroad, they'll catch up to you and then they'll ask for the money back. And I'm not sure if there'll be a penalty or not. Sometimes there might be an interest penalty on that. So, you know, watch out for that. You don't want that. So um, uh, just keep an eye on that. So, all right. Well, I want to thank everybody for those questions. Uh, I do appreciate that. So let me, let me just uh, go to one last thing and talk about the things that I do at Highball Advisors, right? So I'm a, I'm a, like I said, I'm a registered investment advisor. I'm a financial planner first and foremost, right? I'm a fee only fiduciary, which basically means that I don't sell any products or any insurance, any investments, right? I work, I'm, I sell advice and I, you know, that's how I get paid is advising my clients, right? So I have, I have three tiers of service that I do. You can see them, they're on my website, highballadvisors.com. Uh, you know, I do that railroad retirement analysis, which I just talked about through this presentation. I do that for, uh, for my clients as a one-off also for individuals who say, you know, who might be working with a planner or advisor uh, to your uh, question there, Monica, about working with advisor. Maybe you're comfortable with an advisor or, or planner that you had for years and they don't need, uh, they don't understand railroad retirement, but you like working with that individual. Well, you can just come to me and I'll just, I'll just do the railroad retirement part of the equation so they can help plan, right? Because it's all about planning. One way or another, please plan. Don't say, oh, I'm retiring in a month. And uh, what do you think? <laughs> well, you know, let's, you know, I'd say it's too late, but obviously things are easier when plans are in place, as you know, right? Uh, and then uh, the middle one, I uniquely name these for passenger services, coach class, first class, Pullman service for you and the passenger business. You'll know what all that means. So my first class is just one-time financial planning. So I do a comprehensive deep dive financial planning, which includes the railroad retirement maximization, and then all the other moving pieces of the puzzle, right? The 401k is the pensions, how that all flows in, how it helps you achieve your retirement goals. And that's a one-time uh, planning uh, uh, relationship we have. And then the, the Pullman service, which is the ongoing financial planning. So what we just partner together and we're going throughout all the years, constantly meeting throughout the years. And as things come up, we address them and uh, I'm there to help uh, my clients throughout the years so that they enjoy their retirements and do all that. But you can see that on the uh, website. All right. So that's highballadvisors.com. And I just want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. It's 8.50, so I got, I got through a little bit earlier on that. Uh, so check your inboxes. I'm gonna, I'll send the slides out to you. I'll send a link, a recording to this webinar. I'll do some editing uh, of it. Uh, give me a little, uh, like a day or something, and I'll send that out. And then I will also send a, uh, a link to my service calendar. Um, I do free 30-minute uh, consultations if you just want to chat about something, 
you know, top of mind issues are usually what people call about. I can answer a question for you, talk about uh, what I do, talk about how maybe I can help you, that type of thing. So I'll send a link out to that. Um, and also, I don't have it up here, but I do have that YouTube channel, uh, Highball Advisors YouTube channel. You can just search for it on YouTube. Please subscribe to that. I put up a lot of videos and uh, I put up blogs on my uh, on my. Uh, Highball Advisors uh, page. So once again, thank every, uh, thank you everyone for coming tonight. Uh, in the uh, meantime, I always like to say, stay safe and stay on track and take care. Good night, everybody.